Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today we are going to explain how to work with scales, voicing, variation, etc. inside Scalar 2. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, we are inside Scalar 2, inside AUM. As we have seen in, uh, um, in the previous tutorial, you can uh, um, detect chords and therefore a scale as well. But you also have a op an option to browse through scales. Indeed, here you see this button, click on scales, and then you have this uh, um, view. And on the top here, it says all notes. So you click on it, you can decide, for example, I want the scale starting in C, and you see that it changes immediately at the bottom here. It will represent 67 scales starting with C, so C major scale, C minor scale, etc. Or, for example, you can go to D, etc. So you can browse scale through, effectively, um, the first note or the key of that scale. But you can also browse scales on by type so very here it says all types click on it and for example you can say i want to have a, a major scale and uh, it can be dorian mode parisian mode lydia mode etc so in this case let's select a major scale so a d scale major okay and this is what um, is available which is will be only one which is fine and then of course you can play it And you can have some information here as well. Now, you can reset the filters here. If you click, you see in the two uh, selection here boxes, go back to all notes and all types. And you have also search here, which is really nice. So, for example, let's type N, E, A. And you can see straight away, if I close uh, the keyboard, that they started to go through um, scale names that start with NNEA, so Neapolitan major scale, Neapolitan minor scale, etc. So this is really nice. And you can, of course, click on the X and type again a different filter. Okay. So, so far, so good. But also remember, as we have seen uh, before, you can go in detect mode, click on the detect button and start to uh, play some chords like so, like this one, for example, and then stop the detection, and you can see straight away it has identified an A minor scale. Okay, so simple as that. So let's click on the three dot here, and let's remove that detection. Let's go to scale again, and then let's type here minor, like so. Okay, and then we want to have as a key, uh, we want to go to A for this example. So. A minor scale, that is what I would like to use. Of course, you can scroll up and down here. You can see the bar here, which indicates there are others available. Now, if you click on a scale, like so, you enter into this view, which at the top it says voicing, and there are different options for voices. And then also you can go into variation, and there are different options for variation. Now, let's go back to voicing. If you click on the scale again, you go back to the previous view, and you can go back to... Um, the view related to the scale and the, uh, the chords that you can derive from that scale, oh, also clicking on this button here, which looks like an hamburger menu on the left. Okay, so you can access the view, this view, uh, clicking on the scale itself or clicking on this button here. Okay, so when you are inside this view, okay, if you select voicing, that is what you are you have by default. And underneath, you have a number of selections. So the first one is triads, okay? So if you press on the A minor, so it will play the A, the C, and the E, okay? And that is your triad for starting from the A note because it is an A minor scale. So the next note on the scale is a B. And if you use a, tr um, um, a chord over a D, so a third and a fifth, you have effectively a B diminished because the fifth, which should be an F sharp, is actually diminished to an F because the notes within a scale of A will not contain an F sharp or a G flat. It will contain an F, okay? So that is why you have a B diminished, okay? And so on and so forth. So you have effectively chords for each note of the scale in a triad form, format, 
But you can also say, well, I want to see the same chord with a seventh. So, and, and, for, and as I continue now the exercise, I will focus only on the first one. So in this case, it will be an A minor, as it was for the triad, but with a seven added in. And in this case, the seventh is actually a G. And you can see up here that it alights a G. So if I, move, if I move back the cursor here, you see it alights up uh, on the keyboard that you have an A, C3, E, and a G. So the seventh, it's a G, okay? You can have also a ninth here. Okay, so in this case, the ninth would be a B. So you'll have a G, which is a seventh, and also the ninth, which is a B. And the ninth, effectively, is an, if you go up to an octave, which you'll have the A up here, and then you go the next interval, then it will be a B. Then you can go for the eleventh. So in this case, you have the seventh, the ninth, and the eleventh, and so on and so forth, up to the thirteenth. Okay? Sounds a very complicated chord. Okay. Next, you also have option for voicing, and this is really nice. So let's see what it does. So let's click on voicing, okay? And let's go back to this A minor chord. So this is the first type of voicing. So look what happens. So if I go back to the triad, A minor, you can see where the A, C3, and E are at the top on the keyboard. Now, if I go to voicing one, so I don't have any more the... Um, um, a in the same position on that root position. So I have a, an octave above, but it also duplicated um, an octave below. And then the C3 and the E stays the same, in the same position. And it sounds very different from a triad. You can, you can, it sounds much more open, right? Now you have different type of voicing. Let's go through voicing number two. And in this case, you see the, um, it has removed C3 as a node. So, and um, you have um, C3 an octave above, and it became C4. And then you have the same note, the root note A, two octave above, okay? Now let's go to voice in three. You can see it says A minor starting from A, E as an inversion. Okay, so practically the chord starts with an E. You can see that in terms of the original position, it has maintained the E, but it has removed the A and the C frame. It has duplicated the E an octave below, and then it has moved the A and the C an octave above. In that case, the A um, is on A4, sorry, an A, um, A3, and then you have the C4, which previously was a C frame, okay? You can see here on the, on uh, um, highlighted on the keyboard as I explain it. Let's go to voice in four. Okay, here you can see again it kept the root A, but then it has moved the C an octave above the E two octave above, and then it has also duplicated the root note two octave octaves above. Of course, if I move the cursor up here, it will not highlight any more the A, so that's why I'm not doing it. Let's see voice in five. So in this case, it has kept the E in the original position, the fifth, but, that, but then it has moved the A and the C an octave above, and then it has duplicated the E an octave above as well. And lastly, we have voice in six. And this is really open, so it has kept the A and the E in the same position. It moved the C3 an octave above, which has become C4, and then it has duplicated the root note two octaves above. So you might be wondering why is this important? Well, let me show you the creation of a simple pattern just using always a uh, code starting from the root, in this case A for the A minor scale, but changing different voicings. So I go to voicing one, I do this first one here. Do the same for voice two to six. Voicing three. Voicing four. Voicing five. And voicing six. Now let's play them in succession to hear what they sound like. It's Okay, different voicing for the same chord. You can almost build a melody on top of it and create a song as well. 
So it's really nice that you have all these different possibility. Next, if that was not enough, you have variation. So what does it mean? Let's click on variation. And it starts with tonic. So with tonic equal to A, because again, we are on A minor scale, you have an A minor, standard chord, or you have a suspending two, such two. And in this case, it has removed the C3, the third, and you have the second interval, which is, a, that's why it is a sus2, which is a B. And so you can have a sus4, which in this case, it's a D as a sus4, contrary, of course, to a sus2, where it was a B. And you have all, a lot of other different variation. There is a lot of selection. Then, of course, you can go for up to the next note on the scale, the supertonic B. Same thing happened in this case, B diminished. And then B minus seven with an added flat five. Okay, and the flat five is practically D F. Median C, similar thing, C major, C sus two, C sus four. And a lot of other chords as well, of course. I'm not going to go through them all. Subdominant D, again, same. For the dominant E as well. So we are going up the scale. You can hear it's already an, a nice chord progression just using different variation. Okay. And that is why it's, um, it's so important uh, to be able to browse for different scales and then for the scale using chords built, uh, of course, with different variation, different voices, which then you can use uh, in your patterns, in your sequence, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope it was not too technical in terms of music uh, theory. And as always, see you next time. Bye.